Hello! In this video, we will talk about DNA isolation. All living organisms, including animals, plants, and bacteria, carry DNA in their cells. DNA is a very long molecule made up of nucleotide chains, and the order of these nucleotides makes the organisms different than each other. DNA extraction is required for a variety of molecular biology applications. It is important to study the genetic causes of a disease and the development of diagnostics and drugs. It is also very essential to carry out forensic science examination, genomic sequencing, detecting bacteria and viruses in the environment, and for paternity tests. DNA can be isolated from different samples such as human tissue, blood, hair, rodent tissue, bacteria, leaf tissue, yeast, fungi, body fluid, and even from fingerprints. In this video, we will isolate the plasmic DNA from bacterial culture. DNA isolation process, although the source might be different for different samples, has overall three main principles. First step is lysis. In this step, the cell and or the nucleus are disrupted to release the DNA kept inside by using a detergent. The detergent breaks down the lipids in the cell membrane and nuclei and DNA is released as these membrane structures are broken. Second step is precipitation. Following the lysis, the DNA is freed from the nucleus, but it is not mixed with meshed up cell parts. When you apply the centrifuge, cellular debris except the DNA will precipitate. So pre precipitation separates DNA from the cellular debris. Last step is purification. In the purification steps, all the residual cellular debris and unwanted chemicals are removed, causing DNA to be purified. Let's see how DNA is isolated from bacteria. This process begins with the inoculation of liquid growth media with a single bacterial colony that contains the plasmid DNA of interest. Once the bacteria have grown on the plate, a single colony is selected and grown in LB medium, supplemented with the appropriate selective ant antibiotic for 12 to 16 hours at 37 degrees Celsius while shaking. After overnight growth, first we must check the turbidity of media to see whether the bacteria have grown or not. If the tube remains like the one on the left, it means that bacteria did not grow and we cannot isolate DNA. If bacteria grow, the culture should look blurry as in the right one. There are several different kits available commercially for DNA extraction from bacteria. In our lab, we generally use thermoscientific GeneJet plasma mini prep kit. This mini prep kit contains spin columns which has an exclusive silica based membrane, wash buffer, lysis buffer, neutralization buffer, elution buffer, and it also includes resuspension buffer and RNAase A. Before using this buffer, RNAase A solution must be diluted using appropriate concentrations. RNAase A treatment is used for the removal of RNA from the genomic DNA samples. After addition of RNAase A, resuspension solution should be stored at 4 degrees Celsius, so it is better to keep it on ice during the experiment. Firstly, we need to label a microcentrifuge tube according to the name of the culture. After vortex in the culture briefly, milliliter of bacterial culture is added into this tube. And then the tube is centrifuged for 1 minute at 13,000 RPM. Following the centrifuge, the pelleted cells are obtained at the bottom of the tube. After discarding the supernated, pelleted cells are resuspended in 250 microliter of resuspension buffer. The cells should be resuspending completely by pipetting up and down until no visible cell clumps remain. Then, cells are lysed in 250 microliter of lysis buffer. Lysis buffer contains a detergent, such as STAs, to break down the cellular membrane. In this step, DNA is released into the cell suspension. For this to happen, we need to mix thoroughly by inverting the tube 4 to 6 times until the solution becomes viscous and slightly clear. And we should keep the tube at room temperature for 3 minutes. Then. 350 microliter of neutralization solution is added to the cell suspension to allow binding of plasma DNA onto the silica membrane in the spin column. This buffer contains the sodium ions and it neutralizes the negative charges on the DNA molecules. 
which enables DNA to bind to the silica membrane. For this, we must mix immediately and thoroughly by inverting the tube four to six times. The bacterial life should become cloudy. The tube should then be centrifuged for 10 minutes to pellet the cell debris. After centrifuge, only DNA will remain in the supernatant and other cell debris will pellet to the bottom of the tube. The supernatant which has the DNA is transferred to the spin column by a pi pipette. In a step, we have to be careful and avoid contact with the pellet and transfer of the white precipitate remnants. The tube is centrifuged for one minute to bind the DNA to the silica membrane. After centrifuge, the bottom of the spin column tube is poured and the column is placed back into the same collection tube. Next, 500 microliter of the wash solution, which has ethyl alcohol, is added to the spin column and the absorbed DNA is washed to remove contaminants. We need to know in this part is that DNA is not soluble in alcohol. The tube is centrifuged for one minute to wash the DNA in silica membrane and wash step is repeated again. After a second wash step, we should centrifuge the spin column without adding anything to remove residual wash buffer for one minute. Finally, we should label a fresh microcentrifuge tube and transfer the spin column into this new tube. Coming to an end, we need to add 50 microliter of the elution buffer to the center of the spin column in order to elute the plasmic DNA. While adding a lesion buffer, we should be careful not to touch the membrane with the pipette tip. The tube is then centrifuged for 2 minutes at 13,000 RPM. Now, the purified plasmic DNA is ready for immediate use in all molecular biology procedures such as conventional digestion with restriction enzymes, PCR, transformation, sequencing, However, we need to know the concentration of plasma DNA using a spectrophotometer, in this case, a nanodrop. Optical density readings taken by a nanodrop can be used to determine the concentration and also the purity of a DNA sample. In the software, we should first select nucleic acids as we are measuring DNA concentration. Before we begin, we need to clean the pedestals. To do that, we should put 1 microliter of distilled water onto the tiny spot on the lower pedestal. In this case, we have to make sure the pipetting is correct. Before adding water, we should delicately wipe off the pedestals with a tissue. Then we click OK to initialize the software. After cleaning and initializing the system, we should measure 1 microliter of blank. The blank should be the same solution as we use for the elution of DNA. After adding the blank onto the pedestal, we can click the blank in the software. This will cancel out the effects of elution buffer components and help to truly reflect actual DNA concentration. After taking a blank, we can start measuring our sample. Just as for blank, we should take 1 microliter of the sample and put it onto the lower pedestal. This time, we should click the measure part in the software. After measurement, the software will give us the concentration and also the purity parameters for our plasmic DNA. In this case, there are two values we need to pay attention. The first one is 260 to 280 ratio. The ratio is used to assess the purity of DNA and RNA. A ratio between 1.8 and 2 is generally accepted as pure for DNA or RNA. If the ratio is appreciably lower than expected, it can indicate the presence of protein, phenol, or other contaminants. The second one is 260 to 230 ratio. This ratio is used as a secondary measure of nucleic acid purity. Expected 260 to 230 values are commonly in the range of 2 to 2.2. .2. 
If the ratio is appreciably lower than expected, it can also indicate the presence of contaminants. If the values are correct, what we need to do is to write down the concentration of plasmid DNA on the tube to avoid any confusions in the future studies. The plasmid that is purified can be stored at 4 degrees Celsius or minus 20 degrees Celsius.